morning, family. Good morning. It's cool day. Yeah. Morning y'all. It's Tuesday morning but feels like Monday morning. Yesterday everything was pretty closed down for snow day. We're looking at a golf swing today. This guy seems to be really wanting to go this way through impact. So we're going to talk about kind of ideas of controlling and if you need to control that kind of movement. So yesterday's question, who's going to win the Ryder Cup? Obviously very split as the audience very split between Europe and America. One of the overriding ideas was just the quality of the teams could be unblooming belief couldn't they? Justin Thomas, Tiger Woods, Jordan Spee, DJ, Casey, We're on the European side, McElroy, definitely could be a huge one. And it feels a little bit like one of those years that we've kind of all wanted where we get, wouldn't it be great you had like Spee, DJ, Woods, Rory all firing together in a major, that would be fun to watch. So question for today, how many of you are struggling to play as much golf as you want through injury? So back pains, elbow pains, wrist, knee pains, those kind of things. I don't mean like, you know, serious injuries that you've had in the past not related to golf. I mean, they're just as bad. But I mean as in like niggling things that make you just kind of ache a little bit that you wouldn't want to be there. This is obviously in relationship to my video yesterday where I'm trying to do these exercises for four weeks. We'll talk to you today about a little development with those only on day two, but it's all positive, don't worry. School run, school run. Right, so this player plays off 4.5 or 5, so he suggests that like he's the lower part of 5, which when you're in category 1, that does mean quite a lot. Lots of great movements in here, he's obviously got a lot of ability, um, and he can manage this move here, so I don't like the way his hands really look like they're out in front of him, flipping over with the club even further out in front of him. He mentions to me that he has struggle, struggles with the odd push and overdraws, kind of hooking stuff. Managing club face in a more constructive way, or to be honest with you, maybe even managing club face in a different way, because even on the back swing we see the club face wanting to point quite a long way down to the ground in the blur again, still quite hard to see. But managing club face for these kind of players in a different way can boost confidence purely because they're trying a new idea, a shape, a, a shape of shot maybe that's kind of calming their worries down of miss hits or, or of, of misses. So when you know you can get that turnover with speed, so the one going left, hitting into greens, can become very nerve wracking because that will tend to go long left, which can be out of bounds. And when you've only got five shots to play, with yeah that's not gonna help you're not gonna get around club face management ideas today right first thing I would look towards doing so you've got the club on the floor which is like an alignment aid so you're seeing straight lines I want to try and move the club path to the left because I want you to start trying to feel like this movement of turning the club over is a complete disaster to try and teach you how to maybe even hold that club off a little bit let's get that club going slightly left feet slightly left keep the face feeling like it's pointing slightly left at the beginning but the trick is you need to feel that that ball is starting left but we want it cutting back to the right so I want you to make all the movements you're making at the moment but feel like the path when it comes to that downswing is feeling like it's pulling left with your body so as it turns feel like your hands are coming left on the way through feel like the whole path is being tugged left now at the same time if you can get that feeling like it's left while holding off so feeling like your hands are leading as that path face to the left and see what kind of shots that creates what you'll find with skilled players is they learn they react very quickly to their path so you put three uh, kind of stumps on the ground in the way you put obstacles in the way like trees those kind of things they learn to make it functional you having all those straight lines on the ground obviously at the moment isn't really helping you let's get everything moving left move that path left you try and flip that club over will make no sense and you'll want to start holding Holding off. Here we go. <sighs> 
So where we're at with this is that I'm doing 10 minutes each day. Kaylee said it's meant to be three or four times a week, complete workout or 10 minutes each day in this kind of abbreviated package with a few different ones each time. 10 minutes each day is gonna feel more manageable to me. My legs are jelly again. Totally shows you though, for me, for my legs to feel that jelly, just basically supporting my own body weight, how far away I could be, or how far away I am to where I could be. 272, come on, 272. All right, we're gonna use this chair for your next drill. Chair is good for sitting down after you do 10 minutes each day, but also good for your drill on the way through. Think about this. I'm gonna set up like two foot behind the chair your hitting action at the moment is very much kind of around the chair. So what I want you to do is feel like you're holding that front of you off so when the shaft lines up and hits that chair, you've not got a crossover of hands, the face is pointing slightly more up at the sky, so at this point you would be more this way. This is great for training that held off follow through kind of feeling and get rid of that feeling of flipping. So you could do a certain range, you could put a basket on the floor, you can put your golf bag there, that kind of idea. Do a couple of practice swings up against it. Literally, you could do the back swing as well. So coming down and feeling this almost right hand below left rather than catching up and there's the trick you've got to really in your mind think about which hand is doing that for me it feels very much like my left hand is doing all the work my left hand is holding off my left hand is resisting any turnover of my right hand i am left-handed so right those kind of things so that might be why i feel it students mix some say they feel it more with their right hand not turning over some feel it with their left but that really is the key in any drill is you interpreting the feeling that the drill gives you and then trying to interpret that into a shot. Don't at any point think that the drill is doing it for you. The drill is allowing you to kind of gather the feelings of how to recreate a movement. It's not really doing it and you don't want it to do it. You need to be doing it on the course because obviously you can't just take a chair with you everywhere you go. Right, popping into town, my new lens has arrived. There is a potential massive camera bag shake up if this lens does what I need it to do. Yup, here we go. Will this do what I need it to do? That is the question. It's a big question, and I'm sure lots of you don't really care. <laughs> but I care. Will you? Shall we? Right, I do this a lot with definitely skilled golfers who suffer from this problem. I get them to get a lofted club in their hand. And then I ask them to hit a few pitch shots because what happens when you get lofted clubs in your hand and a skilled player is nine times out of 10, they've trained themselves to hold off, to completely not let any flip over happen at all. So they tend to play it more this way rather than this way. Similar, So if they're hitting their chip shots, I wouldn't hit the chip shot here and I'm not good at it by flicking it forwards. I'm trying to keep the loft on that club. And then I asked them to hit, say, 50 yard pitches more than chip shots or 60 yard pitches with like a 56 or a 60. And then I asked them to do the same shot with a 7 iron, uh, with an 8 iron, with a 5 iron. So if they are hitting those pitch shots nine times out of the 10, they are that handle exiting left, that holding off feeling, getting them to do the same ideas with a 7 iron. And then just slowly work that speed back in really helps them understand that they don't need to be hitting it the way they're doing all the time. I mean, like I said, he, this player is definitely functional doing what he's doing. We would need to try these ideas to see if it makes him more functional in situation when he doesn't want that kind of quick left one happening. Other simple drills I do with him as well as I get left hand just on the side of the club, point fingers down at the ground make a few feelings of turning with your body you can't let that club flip over it's so obvious it feels so unnatural when you've got your hand right hand on the left side of the grip pointing down at the ground like this same idea a few practice swings feeling this kind of held off feeling and then straight in there with a seven iron hitting those kind of full shots more often than not for these players it's persuading them that they can be good in another way they don't just have to do it the way that they've probably grown up doing because what happens is they've obviously reached their plateau 4.5 
They still want to keep pushing forwards and possibly they need some bigger armory about their game so they're not fighting that one quick left shot and if they do get it they've got some weapons to not hit it again and here are the weapons these help right tuesday night it's chicken curry night so the main thing I want you to take from this idea today, and maybe I would do it a bit more with a skilled golfer, but I do it with all my students, it's about finding out if this does help them. Because sometimes they, a student comes to you with an issue, but you start looking at them, measuring them, and the issue they bring isn't always the issue that I think is holding them back. On this case, he's definitely a low handicap or with speed and that overturn, I can see where it could happen. These ideas of holding off definitely could help driver and hit more greens. Let me know how you go, post those comments down below as always. Now tomorrow, it's Mrs. Barfield's birthday. So there's no daily vlog tomorrow, but at 8.30 tomorrow, I'm gonna do a live. Good old ass GG live, hey GG live. I used to love doing that, and I'm gonna try and do a few more, it's just timings. I want the evenings to myself sometimes. But you've got any good suggestions for topics to talk about? I've got a few from Twitter today. If you've got one, post in those comment section down below. What would you like tomorrow's live at 8.30 p.m. UK time to be about? Let's hear ya. See you all tomorrow. Mrs. Parfield's birthday, 29 at last day. Eh?